Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with another exhibition match. This time we're going to be once again watching Ben I. This time against Superintendent on Trojan Hills. Trojan Hills, as I mentioned before, is one of my favorite maps in this game. I'm not sure entirely why. I think it's because it actually does do a really good job of being these these ridges do a really good job of maintaining an actual sense of a terrain barrier, which in Zero K is hard to come by. Like choke points and terrain barriers are difficult features to make. But the way that Trojan Hills handles it does a good job of it. Anyway, Ben and I starting out away from the little pit here. Sometimes players start in this pit, sometimes they start over here, sometimes they actually take the defensive position. He is going, f both he and Superintendent are going for the most aggressive position. Superintendent going for cloakies, as is Banana Eye. Starting out with three glaives. And two glaives and a warrior. Well, Superintendent really expects to be attacked soon. Warriors are not going to be useful offensively. Not quickly, anyway. I am quite surprised by this. Normally you'd see the, the Rector being built soon after the glaive. But apparently in this case, that is not what Superintendent is going for. We'll see how that plays out. I think the superintendent might... I'm not entirely sure I agree with that. I mean, like I said, kind of defensive. Maybe wants to avoid building lotuses. In terms of cost, though, I would go for the lotus. So I'm, not, I'm a bit surprised that superintendent's move there. That's one thing. Now, Banana Eye is coming in with Glaze. He is going to actually make validate this purchase to an extent. These Glaze will not do well. And on the other hand, the superintendent's Glaze are also not going to do well because of that lotus. But the lotus is about a third of the cost of the warrior. Well, okay. It's two and a half times as cheap, but yeah, it's validated, I guess. I mean, that's, I don't know, 195 metal worth of glaives, so, uh, and the reclaim, okay. The warrior did pay for itself right there, assuming reclaim happens, but still, it's an unusual play, to say the least. Players tend not to do that, but the superintendent, he hasn't suffered from it at this point. He did, it did work out. He did make it work. And he does have a lot of power in his base as well. He's going to get overdrive much faster than Banana Eye is. And in fact, overall has an economic advantage. Banana Eye is setting himself up. He is getting expansion over to the back. And Superintendent is going for the back. He's gone for it first. He's going for... Well, he's going out here first. Getting another laser turret. Getting another lotus before starting to get a bunch of metal extractors across the map. I like that he's queued this all across the map. I do very much like that. I mentioned during the tournament multitasking is very important. I neglect to mention the fact that multitasking is something that's not only important, but also that the interface of Spring Engine games provides a lot of tools for simplifying. Mainly queuing, but provides very powerful queuing, which means you can multitask, you can set up your multitasking in advance and just pay some attention to the workers to make sure they don't die while they're doing what they're doing. Anyway, Superintendent is pushing out a bit. He is actually making this warrior start to work offensively for him. Banana Eye, on the other hand, He's getting Rockos, which is exactly what he needs to do to get rid of that warrior. Two Rockos and a Glaive. This warrior cannot move forward too easily. The Glaive sort of can, but Banana Eyes Commander with the laser is in the way. I don't know if that's going to stop Superintendent from trying, though. He is setting up. He is posturing. Looks like he wants. he's itching for a fight, but he can't really take it right now. He is, however, going for some harassment, which didn't do much. You see, didn't do anything. I mean, he lost a Glaive and did a bit of damage to the Metal Extractor. Not a big deal, however, what is a big deal is that Superintendent almost has double the economy of Banana Eye. He's been expanding along this ridge, he's been expanding along the backside of the base. Banana Eye has not been expanding anywhere near as quickly. So Superintendent does have an economic advantage. Going for hammers quick- okay, this I don't agree with. Mo although it's more because it's unusual than anything else, but I don't totally agree with that hammer. Because I would save for ha the hammer for a massive defense setup. What he has here can be broken by three warriors. Like, no issue. The only the Rockos are the only problem there, and with a dozen Glaives, that would finish off the right... Well, actually, half a dozen Glaives would get rid of the Rockos, and a couple Warriors would get rid of... Ev or, sorry, three or four Warriors would get rid of everything else. So I don't really agree with the Hammer. I think it's going to end up just being mobbed by either Glaives or Rockos. Admittedly, Banana Eye's not going for Glaives yet, but he, is, he has Rockos, and he's probably going to mob that Hammer once he gets the chance. Now, the Hammer is going to be able to get rid of this Defender, and the other Defender... And ultimately, I think Banana Eye should probably be doing some more harassment. That's the one thing. Superintendent, while he's been expanding a lot, has not been consolidating the expansions. No Lotus is there. No Lotus is there. Some Lotus is here. And some Radar here. So notice what's going on. And Banana Eye now aware that this ridge is a threat he has to deal with. And it looks like... That being said, Superintendent cannot approach. 
These warriors can't do much. The Rocco foolishly moving the Rockos in. Banana Eye, why did you do that? You, you've done better. But we'll see how that works out. Banana Eye is managing to damage Superintendent's com commander quite a lot. I gotta, sorry, I've got to change one small thing about my settings. I need to turn on smooth mesh scrolling. This is getting annoying. Okay, that's better. Now I see why smooth mesh scrolling is an option because on a map like this, it's extremely useful. Anyway, as I was saying, Glaives moving into the center. This is what I mean. This break is pretty possible. Immediately, the hammers are good support here. Banana Eye's commander is going down. Banana Eye lost his commander. Superintendent has his commander morphed. He does have a shotgun on it. Shotgun and auto repair system, so it's not going to go down too quickly, but the Rockos are definitely a good choice. However, if that commander jumps in, it could just take out the Rockos, no problem. And the center of the map is broken, and now this is where I'm not sure about the hammers. Admittedly, Rockos have been a focus, but Glaives are going to be switched to. The Warriors do support the hammers a bit from the Glaives, but the Glaives have a lot of angles they can go around. They move a lot faster than Warriors. Now, Superintendent, why is he not... Okay, I can see why he might not be pushing in. He's luring the Rockos to the Lotus. One of the Rockos is going to die. The other Rocco taking a lot of damage. And now Superintendent is moving forward to get, get rid of these Rockos once and for all. I was about to say, I can see why he isn't jumping in, because it's harder to dodge rockets when you're near them. But Superintendent needs to be focused on this. He needs to micro this somewhat. He's holding himself in place. Needs to move away from there. Now he's good. Now he's got rid of the Rockos. And at the same time, he's getting attacked here. He's I don't think he's paying attention to these. Let's see, what is he paying attention to right now? Actually, he is. He is paying attention to this battlefield. Very important to point out, because this battlefield is going to decide the game. I mean, Superintendent does have an economic advantage, yes. And he does have Lotuses around it. Good, he has somewhat consolidated that. But a lot of his money is invested into Hammers. And most of the money that Banana Eye has is invested into Rockos. And the Rockos are really going to do a much better job. The Hammers can sort of help, but not by much. They're too inaccurate to deal with the Rockos. They are for anti-statics. They're for getting rid of static defenses, of which Banana Eye has few. I think he only has a couple around his main base, and that's about it. And Glaives and Warriors could deal with that without issue. Honestly, I think... Zeus's or Rocco's of his own would have been Superintendent's best choice, and he is actually going for Rocco's right now. He does have a few coming in. He... Okay, this is a problem. I forgot to point this out earlier. I said Superintendent had an economic advantage. I didn't say he was translating that into a production advantage, which is what you need to do. And no caretakers, no workers nearby, no rectors are nearby. There is a geothermal plant being built, but that's only going to exacerbate the floating issue. Superintendent could put a caretaker around here and still have metal left to spare. Even though energy is his bottleneck right now. He needs that, and that's the thing that Banana Eye is doing right. He has a caretaker, he is pushing more metal in. Despite the economic disadvantage, Banana Eye is getting more units just because he is actually pushing that metal into his factory. And it looks like Superintendent is now... Okay, setting up a gunship plant. That's something. He still needs to get... Okay, I can see what he's getting the geothermal plant. He needs the energy, yes, but... He's... Losing all of his units here, yet only has the hammers. The hammers really don't count. Like, they don't. They will not work in this context. Banana Eye can rush them and win out, pretty much, from this point. The gunship plant, however, is going to be another half minute before it's done. No, another whole minute. Wow, Superintendent's actually running low. His energy deficiency is worse than I thought. And still pushing out from the Klogobot factory. He does have Rocco's coming in. At best, he can get defense, but he doesn't have a lot of units. And their hammers are going down the... Middle of the map, getting attacked heavily. The Warriors trying to do what they can to support the Hammers, but the Hammers moving away from the Warriors. Not that it matters, the Rockos are too much. Like I said, the Hammers were not the best option here. That's why I was suspicious about them. Like, there weren't enough defenses in the center to really justify the Hammers. Zeus's and Rockos, actually Warriors and Glaze would have been fine at that point. Zeus's and Rockos are also a good choice. The center is being claimed somewhat by Superintendent, but weakly, and Banana Eye is taking his own west side ridge. Does have the back of the map. Superintendent's economic advantage is faltering. Not to mention the fact that he simply does not have the added production capacity to make that work. Now, that being said, gunships are coming. Prob oh, Banshee's Mass Banshee is going to be the support strategy here. And Superintendent will be well advised to push this with his commander. Why is he not pushing with his commander? He has the energy now. He, the geothermal is... Actually, it looks like it's all wind. But still, he doesn't need to build more wind. He needs to push this unit. He needs to assist the factory. I'm not sure... If I'm beginning to suspect that Superintendent may not remember that you can assist factories. He might have been playing other spring games where you can't. Because he hasn't assisted the factory all game, and Banana Eye certainly is, and this is what Banana Eye is using to win the game. Like, Banana Eye should not be winning this game. But Superintendent has not been using his economic advantage to push production, and at this point, 
Geothermal is done, and this production needs to be assisted. That is, that is what Superintendent has to do right now, is assist this production. Assist this production. Get a rector here. Get a caretaker here. Doesn't matter. Just push stuff out. Use the money. Nice tick defense here, but it doesn't matter. Like, Superintendent is really putting himself at a disadvantage he doesn't need to have himself at. And it's just... Like I said, he has the commander right here. He has no extra build power, but that's still 10 build power. I, I'm harping. I know I'm harping. And I try not to harp. But in this case, it's a rather obvious thing, and I think the superintendent may have simply forgotten. I think it slipped his mind. I don't blame him. I think it's simply something that slipped his mind. He's going to lose his commander, too, by the way. His commander cannot get away in time. No, it can barely get away in time. The Banshee's trying to help out, and they are succeeding. That commander will escape, and has a couple auto repair systems, too, so it's actually going to survive. That was close, though. And it doesn't have to be. And now, at this point, anti-air is being built up. Defenders are being built up, and... No doubt, Zeus, I mean, Zeus's deal with Banshees is not too much issue in large enough numbers. Gunship plant taking a lot of damage. Caretaker finally being built, and another one in the main base finally being built. Five minutes too late. This, character, this factory is not going to go down. The Banshees have saved it, but that's still way too late. And at this point, Banana Eye, he's getting back in it economically. He's able to push the center, able to secure part of the center, and actually taking the Metal Strider here too. Metal Strider in the center, though have been pretty evenly split between Superintendent and Banana Eye. No denying that. However, that being said, these Zeuses are able to get rid of the Banshees no problem. The Banshees are harassing pretty well, and that's that's the best thing that Banana Eye can do. A Scythe, okay, not a bad idea. Scythe's coming in as well, but that's not going to win in the game. Not one Scythe, not in this position. This Scythe, however, that has a good chance. At the same time, we do have an attack coming in on this gunship plant. The Scythe here in the Klogobot factory is not going to be able to finish this off. Rockos are going to stop it before it gets through, and that is not going to make a difference. This attack in the gunship plant might help, but no, the gunship plant is... The gunship plant's fine. The Banshees will be able to take care of the Zeus. The Zeus is focused on the gunship plant, and Superintendent is once again pushing to the center. His caretakers are up. He is now taking advantage of his economic advantage, but way too late for it to really be an advantage. The players are effectively even at this point. Then I is taking a bit more harassment damage, but not much, and Superintendent admittedly doesn't have a lot of direct damage going on in his main base compared to Banana Eye, but it's, he's playing catch-up at this point. That's the thing, despite his economic advantage, he's playing catch-up in terms of unit count, and now I think he's finally winning. I mean, Banana Eye is... No, what am I saying? I think he is winning. He has much more army for cost, but that was a harder Scrabble fight than it had to be. Superintendent could probably had had twice as many units as he has here by now if he had built up the caretakers earlier. I mean, he has taken advantage of this. He is reclaiming. He is using all the metal he has. He has enough caretakers to actually do that. So right now, he's going to win. He's This is his game to lose at this point, but he made it a lot harder on himself than it had to be. So it still worked out. I mean, it still managed to work it out. The economic advantage still worked for him, and an air, air plant not going to come up in time. The Banshee's getting hit pretty hard, though. It's just the Caretaker, only one Caretaker, so the Cloakie Bots are falling behind. Superintendent is pushing in, and now this economic advantage is being actually used. I'd say that this is basically a game... That, okay, building a storage, I don't know why. Oh, no, sorry, transmission pylon. My mistake. That was a storage. Building a transmission pylon, I know exactly why. To get the geothermal stuff all the way around here. Good plan. Nice job, Superintendent. That's a great way to deal with a lot of excess energy, and now that excess energy goes to overdrive. Once again, though, I don't agree with the hammers. Not fully, anyway. He is attacking the base. I can sort of see that, but at the same time, Zeus's and Warriors do the trick. Hammers are when there's a mass... Like, half a dozen Lotus... Actually, when you get a few Stingers up. A bunch of Lotuses and Stingers is a big mass of defenses. Actually, attacking this area here wouldn't be a bad choice for the hammers. And Superintendent morphing his commander further... Once again, we see another recon com and a battle com. I am starting to... Okay, at first I thought it was just Gota because he did that last game. I'm thinking, oh, well, Gota's being Gota. Gota can do anything. Gota does everything. If Gota does it, doesn't mean you can. Well, Superintendent's doing it, and... She's just working out. <laughs> I'd be wrong if I said it wasn't working out at least somewhat. Certainly is able to push through a fair bit, but he is investing a lot of that commander. Granted, he has a lot of money with which to do so. Though, on the other hand, getting more units is always good. A couple of Jethro's are in place. Okay. 
five Jethro's, probably a few too many. Shadows are, okay, no, never mind. No, there are shadows that are coming up. That's fine. Five Jethro's is a good number. That is definitely worth it because the shadows are going to be the biggest threat to this commander. We saw it last game, go to this commander. That was staying alive a long time because nothing was really dealing with it directly. And, ow, oh, superintendent, I was about to say. Shadows are the biggest threat. Now there's no real point having, there's some point having Jethro's. So obviously shadows are still harassment, but that is painful. That is so painful. I mean, recon comps do not have a whole lot of health, even when they do have a lot of levels. Now, the shadows are going down. One of them has gone down, another one will go down shortly. So, the air switch for Banana Eye was predicted, or no, not predicted, but it was seen quickly enough that it can be dealt with. But that loss, the commander, that is, that is not insignificant. Black Dawn's coming in as well. So, I mean, admittedly, Banana Eye has a ton of money. He has a ton of resources. He has a ton of units. He should be harassing the periphery, though. That's the one big thing. His, the periphery is fairly weak. Send a few units to harass the periphery. Don't attack the main base until you're sure you can win. That's the thing. You don't want to attack the main base until it's absolutely certain you can win, and he is probably focusing way too much on it. I mean, sending some scythes in here to deal with some stuff here and there, not a terrible idea if he can take care of a factory, perhaps. But this isn't working. Losing another Black Dawn, trying to get... Losing a Black Dawn to get rid of the factory, I think... No, I think that's not the only Black Dawn he's lost. He is trying to throw away the game here. He's lost his commander. He's lost to Black Dawn. Losing more and more units. Losing metal into Banana Eye's territory. This is the big thing. Banana Eye is economic disadvantage. Is fading. He is, in fact, excessing. Admittedly, partly it's because he lost a caretaker. But still, he is excessing. He has pretty much no economic disadvantage. Superintendent, he needs to get himself in a position where he's actually dealing with this well. And check his overdrive. He does have a pretty good grid... But it's, despite the power of that grid, he still does have not a lot to help him out. All the Jethro's appear to be dead, too. Let's double check. And it looks like, yeah, I don't see any Jethro's on here. I mean, it's kind of tell the selection, but it looks like the Jethro's have all died. The Black Dawn taking a lot of damage. Nothing really to deal with these vamps. And Superintendent is not harassing the sides. He needs to, he can't build a stronger economy. He needs to destroy Superintendent's. That's the thing. He needs to get rid of this base here. He needs to get rid of this base here. He needs to get rid of this base in the north. That's what he needs to do. He needs to get rid of all of these bases, and if he doesn't do so, he's going to lose the game. And Trident's... Good choice, but still. These bases here are the reason why Banana Eye can stay in the game. And the Reclaim is the reason why Banana Eye is winning. Or at least getting back into the game. He's not winning yet. He's... I'd be cased he'd say he's winning, but he is getting back in the game. This is becoming a match again. And it's becoming a match because Superintendent is not dealing with harassment. Or rather, he's not harassing himself. He's not dealing with these side bases. Because these side bases are not well defended. He is trying to go for the main. He's been trying to beat down the main this entire time, which means Banana Eye can just expand along the periphery and not worry about this. And that's the thing, is that even though he has been damaging the units pretty well, he's been throwing away units at the same time. He's been throwing metal into Banana Eye's territory. And at this point, I'd say there actually are enough Lotuses to justify those hammers, but they'd be better used getting rid of these bases. Getting rid of all these side bases. But the superintendent insists on assaulting the center, and admittedly, slowly but surely, he is dealing some damage here. It's just that it's emphasis on the slowly, and I actually should de-emphasize the surely as well, because yeah, he's doing what he can. But he's taking a lot of damage. He's his black Dawn's coming in as well. He's gonna try to fire off another salvo to get rid of this airplane factory. Gonna be able to get, no, not quite able. To, oh yes, able to get rid of the vamp. As it takes off, the vamp smashes into all the rockets. That being said, the ramp, vamp tanked all those rockets for the factory, which is the real target. I mean, Superintendent wanted to get rid of the factory. That vamp tanked all those shots nicely. And it looks like Ben I still throws in the towel. He still surrenders. Realizes he can't deal with this. I suppose I can see that. I mean, it was a lot of pressure coming in here. Superintendent, well done for winning. Still, though, it would have been... There were some mistakes made. It's just... Banana Eye didn't manage to take advantage of that. Admittedly, not a lot of harassment all around. I mean, Superintendent was weak for a while to harassment. Even then, a bunch of glazes around the side would have dealt with it. I realized the middle was a pretty heated battleground for pushes. But, yeah, Superintendent and Banana Eye both would have benefited from harassing a little bit. Sending a few glazes around the side. Just like half, like half dozen at most glazes around the side. Just to deal with the economy your opponent has. Just to bring them down. Because Superintendent, the thing is, that massive economic advantage... That lasted the entire game, but only mattered in the last half or so. Anyway, 
thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, and that will be it for me tonight. So have a good night, everybody.